It's a wonderful day in West Virginia. Welcome to the Daily 304 Innovators and Entrepreneurs feature. Here at the Daily 304, we are committed to sharing the wealth, beauty, opportunity, and innovation that's here in wonderful Almost Heaven, West Virginia. Twice a month, we introduce you to innovators and entrepreneurs and dig a little deeper into their companies, their work, their purpose, and the reasons they are here in the Mountain State and proud to call themselves West Virginians. Today, we are joined by Derek Scarborough. He's a Deputy Director and Business Development Lead at the Robert C. Byrd Institute at Marshall University. He and his team work with entrepreneurs, inventors, small businesses, and large corporations across all sectors with prototype development, customized training, reverse engineering, quality assurance, and contracting opportunities. Derek Scarborough, thanks for being here with us today. Thanks for having me, my pleasure. Derek, as we just mentioned, RCBI focuses on all kinds of industries, all while helping entrepreneurs teach the next generation of leaders. Can you talk a little bit about how these areas foster a culture of entrepreneurship in your facilities and the working groups that you have throughout the state? Certainly. I'll start by a relevant example from just this morning, contacted by a business in Raleigh County that uh, distributes parts to other companies who uh, sees an opportunity to bring some of that business in-house in West Virginia to vertically integrate some of their product line. And we're gonna help them uh, figure out how to make some of those components here that are currently being sourced overseas. And um, also connect that uh, small business person with um, some local suppliers who will be able to make those products for them, hopefully, and uh, create some good uh, jobs and outcomes here in the Mountain State. That's an excellent example. So you're reshoring or onshoring things, bringing them back from overseas, producing them where you are, uh, and, and more of a local business level support for, for entrepreneurs. Talk to me, what other things do you do to help folks that have an idea? And can you give me an example or two of when I have an idea of something I want to build or make or create or sell that solves a problem, how do, I, how do you get that to market? How do you marketize it? Certainly, and we see people from all across the spectrum with perhaps they walk in the door here uh, in this lobby behind me with uh, a napkin idea. Perhaps mm -hmm. they, they walk in with a, uh, an invention that they've already patented, but they've never made a working prototype before. Or perhaps they're an existing business that's got an idea for a, a new product line or a twist on an old product line. So they can interface with our design engineers, technical staff who can help produce a uh, 3D image file, 3D drawing using computer-aided design software. We can reverse engineer uh, parts and components with laser scanning and use those to develop a, a model for a person's product and then help them make a test their proof of concept by making a prototype. And then everything we do is with an eye on the eventual hopefully mass production of that item and thinking about how they're going to replicate this, how we can help them do so efficiently and effectively. And again, hopefully source suppliers here in the region uh, who can help possibly partner or help that entrepreneur figure out how to make it themselves. A confectionery business in Greenbrier County, Mama Faye's Fudge, check them out online mm -hmm. um, at, for our help getting their, their logo on their product. Um, so we develop their logo as a mold that can be pressed onto their, their fudge products. Another um, example, a, a company, again, look them up online, Hellbender Lures. Uh, had an idea for a fishing lure and um, asked us to help design that, take their idea, turn it into a 3D file, and um, make a mold that they could use to uh, replicate these fishing lures that are capturing some awesome, awesome muskies in West Virginia rivers. Wonderful, so I, I hear fudge, fishing lures. I also know that you had uh, a couple folks making precision um, uh, firearms, I believe, and yes. uh, others making uh, fishing nets, like new ideas and ways yeah. to, to do a variety of products. So. I heard you say you're taking something that's on the back of a napkin, converting it to digital, and then you have very sophisticated manufacturing equipment there 
where you're making prototypes and actual product for, for businesses? Absolutely. We've got um, industrial and consumer grade 3D printing equipment that can print in different types of nylons, plastics, uh, resins, and uh, even metal 3D printing. And, and then we have a whole host of CNC equipment uh, that you might see in a large factory setting, um, large CNC milling machines, and laser cutters, water jets, press brakes, things like that, that can bend and shape metals and other materials. And we've got uh, machinists on staff, welders on staff, engineers on staff who can help bring your idea to life and help you te teach you how to make it. So you have kind of an infrastructure built that I wouldn't as a small business person need to invest in, but I can take advantage of to help me get to the actual place where I can produce so that I can make revenue to eventually scale. Right, we wanna help you with your prototype. We mm -hmm. wanna help you with understanding different ways you can make it, source materials, source suppliers maybe. Uh, but where possible, we can facilitate small batch production to help you make your first 100X or whatever wow. of your part or your product, your invention, and, and help you scale that. Uh, one thing we do here at the Daily 304 is we um, ask our guests to provide a piece of advice, something to entrepreneurs that you would say, um, say to them over and over to keep them going, to keep them energized, to give them hope and, and guidance. What's something that you think is key in taking an idea from the back of a napkin to, uh, sure. to scale it to market? What would that be? I'd have to repeat the advice from uh, Marshall's president, Brad Smith, who's an expert in this field, but you know, fall in love with your problem, not your solution. And figure out the, understand your problem that you're trying to solve, who it's going to help and empathize with that potential customer. And that'll help lead you to your best innovation instead of falling in love with your first idea mm -hmm. uh, around a solution and then making it necessarily fit all the problems. You know, understand and empathize with that problem and who right. the future customer will be first. What an insightful uh, idea for innovation. So Derek, thank you. Give me real quick, what's the best way for our listeners and viewers to be able to connect with you and the Robert C. Byrd Institute for Manufacturing? Sure, look us up online, really simple, rcbi.org. Wonderful. Thank you for your time today, and uh, we really appreciate all you're doing for West Virginia and the small business entrepreneurs, inventors, and innovators that are here. Our pleasure. It's never a dull day, and it's a labor of love. Have a great day, Derek. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on all our social media channels at The Daily 304. You can also stay up to date with all the great things happening in beautiful, almost heaven, West Virginia by heading on over to wv.gov daily 304. We'll see you again next time.